James 5, we're going to read verses 10 and 11. Two verses, verses 10 and 11 <coughs> of James chapter 5. As our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing to read God's word, and let's begin together. Verse 10, we'll read 10 and 11 in unison, all right? Beginning on verse 10, ready? Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Let's pray, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the scripture here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music so far this evening, for the good fellowship, for the good spirit that's here on Sunday night. And Lord, we bow before you here at the beginning of what's going to be the preaching of your word. And Lord, we're asking you that you would speak to our hearts tonight. And that Lord, we would uh, be open and we would be focused on what you would want to say to each of us. I pray, Lord, you'll bless the special as it's sung that we'll uh, think about the words that are being a part of this song, Lord, and the message it will have for our hearts that it will put us in tune with your heart tonight that we'll all have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to each of us this evening. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we bow before you in prayer now this evening, and we ask you to speak to our hearts tonight. I pray that each of us will focus on your word this evening, and that we'll give our full attention to the truth that we have before us tonight. Thank you again for what you have done, and Lord, what I believe you will do yet in our service this evening. Uh, help me to say what I ought to say tonight, and leave unsaid what doesn't need to be said. And Lord, use the Word of God in each of our lives tonight to accomplish your will. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. If you'll help me, Dean, I need a little help, I think, all right? And I need some water, too, by the way. Anybody else allergies bothering them at all? 
Wow. All right. Well, you, you don't live in Columbus very long, but you're aware of the name Wayne Woodrow Hayes, uh, known as Woody around these places. And uh, Woody Hayes, football coach at Ohio State, compiled a 205 and 61 record while he was coach at Ohio State. Woody would say, you don't get hurt running straight ahead. Three yards and a cloud of dust will pound you, pound you, pound you until you quit. That was his motto. Edmund Burke said, never despair. I never despair, but if I do despair, I work on in despair. Abraham Lincoln, in 1831, failed in business. In 1832, he failed in a run for the legislature. In 1833, he failed again in business. In 1834, he was elected to the legislature. In 1838, he was defeated as Speaker. In 1840, he was defeated for the electorate. In 1843, he was defeated for Congress. In 1846, he was elected to Congress. In 1848, he was defeated for Congress. In 1855, he was defeated for Senate. In 1856, he was defeated for Vice President. In 1858, he was defeated for the Senate. And in 1860, he was elected President of the United States. Hang in there. Never quit. Never give up. Never turn back. Never throw in the towel. Thomas Edison said, Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close to success they were when they gave up. Did you catch that? Many of life's failures are just people who never realized how close they were to success when they gave up. Look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 in your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul writes <clears throat> in verse number 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul writes these words, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Wow. You get that? Notice what he said. Troubled where? On every side. You think you got troubles? <laughs> Join the club. Everybody has troubles. In fact, Paul said, there's not a side I can look to, but I don't see trouble. Troubled on every side. What else? But I'm not distressed. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing on. I'm perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. He says, I'm, I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. I may be knocked down, but I'm not knocked out. And he said, I'm going to keep on going. Listen, stay after it. Stay with it. Stay persistent. Don't give up. Don't give in. Nothing takes the place of persistence in your Christian life. Just stay with it. Three yards and a cloud of dust. Run the ball, hit the line, get tackled, get up, get the ball, hit the line, get tackled, get up, get the ball, get just keep on going. Eventually, persistence will win. Persistence cannot be replaced. Genius won't do it. Luck won't do it. Education won't do it. Just keep at it. Keep on working. Keep on on serving keep on loving keep on helping keep on giving keep on singing keep on serving keep on teaching just keep at it it's a great poem someone wrote years ago and it goes like this when things go wrong as they sometimes will and when the road you're trudging seems all uphill when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. 
Life is queer with its twists and its turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when they might have won had they stuck it out. Don't give up, though the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It when, it's when things seem worst that you must not quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. The Bible's full of men and women who just didn't quit. Noah never quit. Joseph never quit. Job, that we read about in, in, in James there, never quit. David never quit. Nehemiah never quit. Peter never quit. Paul never quit. They just kept at it. I'll give you two words to think about this evening along these lines of don't quit and three yards in a cloud of dust. Number one is the word persevere. Persevere. Perseverance. Persistence. Noah preached the gospel for at least 120 years, possibly longer than that. But only his family came into the ark. Eight souls. His sons, their wives, and his wife. That's perseverance. You talk about you feel like the whole world's against you? It was. <laughs> In Noah's day. It was him against the world. Paul persevered. We read about his struggles in 2 Corinthians 4. You read them again in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Churches started. Souls saved. Lives touched. Uh, preacher boys, Timothy and Titus, trained for the ministry. Half of the New Testament coming from uh, his, through his pen. The Holy Spirit of God using him. Listen. Perseverance. Staying with it. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 with me, will you? 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Notice what Paul says. In starting in verse number 23, he's saying, Are they the ministers of Christ? And he lets you know I'm speaking as a fool here. I am more. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23. Notice he says, In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft, of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Sounds to me like trouble on every side, doesn't it? In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. I don't know about you. Does that sound like, hey, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? Hmm? Boy, that's not the advertisement you're looking for, is it? Huh? I'd like to hear Brother Osteen preach on that passage one day. Verse 28, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He says, that's just things that I'm dealing with. That doesn't even, I'm not even talking about taking care of the church. And you think you have it tough? You think you've got it rough because it, it may be a little warm in church on Sunday night? Or, or you, you have a difficulty? Perseverance. Perseverance. When Jesus taught on prayer, you know what Jesus taught about prayer? He taught about perseverance. There's two places Jesus taught His disciples about prayer. One is in Luke 11, and, and that's where He talks about the friend that came, had a friend come to Him at midnight and he didn't have any bread to set before Him. And he had to go to his friend's house to get bread at midnight. And remember, he came and he banged on the door and he said, Hey, 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 I need some bread. Get up. 
I got a friend come to me at night. I need some bread to set before him. Remember what the fellow said? He looked out the window from uh, his stairs and he said, Go away, man. We're in bed. Huh? And the fellow said, Well, I must not want it. I must not be able to get it. No, no, no. He kept on, he kept on knocking. He kept on banging. And, 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 and the Bible doesn't say this, but I think I know what happened. His wife said, If we're going to get any sleep, you better give that guy some bread. <laughs> say, How do you know that happened? Because I'm married. That's how I know that happens. <laughs> and uh, that's the way that works. And so, and by the way, but listen, Jesus made this point. He said he did not get up and give him because he was his friend, but because of his importunity, his perseverance, his persistence, his continual coming. The other time Jesus taught on prayer is in Luke 18. And in Luke 18, it's a widow woman who wants to be avenged of her adversary. And she goes to a judge, and your judge wants nothing to do with it. And won't listen to her. But, but the Bible says, in fact, if you want to look at Luke 18, let's look there for a minute. Let's look at Luke 18. Jesus said, He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to feign, and saying, There was in the city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city... And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not... What's the next three words? For a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, but because this widow troubleth me. The word is agitates me. Disturbs me. He said, I will avenge her, lest by her... What's the next two words, church? Continual coming, she weary me. Continually coming. Continually coming. And the Lord is teaching them about prayer. Telling its persistence. It's perseverance. It's continuing to pray. God said, I'll, I'll avenge my elect which cry day and night unto me, though I tarry long with him. God says that's the way you get prayers answered. So often, if we're that guy who's knocking on the door at midnight, or we're the widow, and we come and we ask, and we don't get the answer right away, we say, well, God said no. And we got that teaching, well, God says no, and God says yes, and God says wait a while. And we wrap it up. You're hard-pressed to find that in the Bible. What God is waiting on is to see whether you're going to be persistent enough to keep praying for Him. When my children were small and they would want my attention, and Dad, I'd be talking to somebody after church. They say, Dad, I'd say just a minute, I'm talking to somebody, and and they say, Dad, just a minute, I'm talking to somebody, and I talked to them. Priest, I looked down and they were gone. You know what I figure? wasn't too important. But if they kept tugging and finally I say, Excuse me, what do you want? They got, they got me to ask what they want because they weren't going to leave me alone. That's what the unjust judge said, wasn't it? He said, I can't go anywhere. This widow woman's bugging me. She's agitating me. She's, she's always asking me. She's always after me. We don't pray like that, do we? Perseverance. Perseverance. I know there's burdens, but keep on going. I know there's heartaches, but keep on going. I know you get discouraged, but keep on going. I know there's family trouble, but keep on going. I know there's health problems, but keep on going. I know you might have created some of your own problems, but keep on going. It's a battle we're in. But listen, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm in this thing to succeed. I'm in this thing to win. I never, I never started off in doing anything in my life with the idea that I'll fail. You always start with the idea, I'm going to succeed at this. I'm going to, I'm going to conquer this thing. And though, though, though and times, hey, times have been tough. Times it gets difficult, sure. Times verbal missiles are launched or money is scarce, absolutely. But you continue. You keep on going. I recall so clearly, and I, I thank God that that you know the, the Lord in His providence put me in the home He did, and, 
and, and I got to hear the men of God. I got to hear, I still remember Lester Roloff and, and, and I remember him, listen to him saying, run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. If I fall down, I'm going to get right up. I didn't start out to play. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. So run if you want to, run if you will, but I came here to stay. Never forget that. And I heard that a few years ago. And uh, it still stays with me. Amazing. Persevere. Perseverance. There's two rules to perseverance. Number one, you take the next step. You just take the next step step. Number two is when you think you can't take the next step, refer to rule, num- refer to rule number one. Take the next step. So I just don't know what to do. I'm discouraged or I'm despondent or I'm lonely or I'm, I'm upset or I'm mad or I'm angry or I'm... Hey, you know what you do? You get up, you get your Bible out, you read your Bible, you do what you're supposed to do. If it's Sunday, you get up and you spend time with God and you get yourself dressed and you go to church. You just do what you're supposed to do. Perseverance. The second word I want to leave with you tonight is the word reversals. Reversal. Look at Galatians chapter 6 with me, would you please? Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, notice with me verse number 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. When I say reversals, what I mean is this. Things will not go like you expect them to go. How many of you tonight are 30 years of age or older? Put your hand up. Okay? How many of you, put your hands down, 30 years of age or older will stand up and testify tonight your life has gone exactly as you thought it would go? I'll I'll give you time. (laughs) Not quite, huh? What is that? Reversals. Things don't go like you thought they would. Due season hasn't uh, uh, in due season you shall reap if you faint not. I've seen a lot of parents give up on training their children. They do pretty good when they're younger, and then they get in to be teenagers, and they just get weary in well doing, and they get tired. Of, they say, "I'm just tired of fighting the battles, tired of fighting." And they let up and they give up. Can I encourage you tonight, mom and dad, don't do that. Don't do that. When your children get to be teens, that's listen, though, though they buck you and they, they may try to say, oh man, why can't I do this? You know what? They need you to be strong. They need you to hold the line. They, in their heart, they want to hold the line. But they, it, it sure helps when they say, They may not be at the point in their life where they can go to their friends and say, you know what, I'm not doing that. But they can be the point where they can come and say, my mom and dad said I can't do that. Be there for them. Be there for them. Be their backup. And give them something to to, to help them. But stand strong. Don't cave in. Remember what we talked about Eli this morning? Eli wouldn't restrain his sons. He knew they were doing wrong. He heard they were doing wrong. He said, what? Why didn't he do something about it? You know what I really think? I think he was old. He was tired. And he just, I'm not going to mess with it. He just, he just couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. Now, I give him credit. When he, when he had opportunity to start over with Samuel, he did a good job. And he trained Samuel. And, and, and Samuel was a man of integrity and a man of honesty. God helped him, and, and the people, people trusted Samuel. Talk about a life not going like you think, like you think it would. Uh, think about Joseph. Joseph has dreams as a 17-year-old boy. 
And his dreams are that, you know, uh, uh, he's, he's in the field and remember these uh, sheaths are, are out there and he's, all of them bow down to him. The, 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 I think it was the sun and the moon, that, that, all those planets, they're all bowing down to him. In other words, all you guys are bowing down to me one day. Wow. You wonder why his brothers hated him? <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's good to have dreams when you're 17, right, Brother Jack? But maybe not tell them to everybody. You know? <laughs> maybe that's a good idea. But he told them to his brothers. And, and I'm sure he's thinking, man, I'm going to be somebody great. Look at, look at what God showed me. I'm going to be somebody great one day. Next thing he knows, he's being beat up by his brothers. And, and they're talking about who wants to kill him. And they hear him, he hears them arguing. The Bible talks about he was in great anguish of soul. I mean, it's a little anguishing to hear your, your 11 brothers or 10 brothers, one, I think Benjamin was at home, the, the ten brothers are arguing about who wants to strike the fatal blow to do you in. And they're arguing. One brother's finally standing up saying, no, no, we shouldn't kill him. And I turn Joseph is thinking, yeah, I like his idea. But then they decide, we'll leave him in a pit. Well, that's great. What was the pit there for? That's exactly right. You put a pit there, and usually they put some spikes at the bottom of that pit, bone and such, so the animal fall in there and get impaled, and they've got lunch, you know. And so they put him in there, they wait for a wild animal to come. Great, I'm just sitting down here waiting for some wild beast to come along. And then they decide, no, here come some traders, let's sell him. We can make some money off this guy. And they did. Now he's miles away from home. He's a teenager. Did you ever think he thought, what, what is this? What, what plan is this? How does this happen? This isn't, this isn't the way he planned it would go. He goes to work for a guy named Potiphar. And he does well. He's honest. He's a man of integrity. He's a hard worker. I think he must have been a good organizer, a good leader, a good supervisor. Pretty soon he's in charge of everything. And his, Potiphar's wife lays her eyes on him. And teams of the scripture seems to indicate day after day she pressed on him and she tried to get him to be immoral with her. And he refused. And finally one day, he got all alone. She got him alone in the house. Nobody else in there. And she tries to force himself on, herself on him and he runs away and she grabs his coat and takes it off. And once he runs away, she screams and yells and they come running in and she says, oh, that Hebrew, he tried to force himself on me. I grabbed his coat. Well, they're not going to believe Joseph. He's a Hebrew slave. We're going to believe Potiphar's wife. So he gets thrown into prison. He gets sentenced. Now, he's a convict. He's a guy with a record. Can you imagine? Do you ever think he sat in the jail cell and was thinking, what about those dreams I had? What about everybody bowing down to me? God, where, where does that come into play? Where, where is that in your plan? But you know, it just seems like any, anywhere Joseph went, whether it's Potiphar's house or whether it was in the prison, he just kept on going. He just kept on serving God. And God gave him favor with the, he gave him favor with Potiphar, now he gives him favor with the warden in the prison. Pretty soon, after just a, not, not a real long amount of time, Joseph's running the prison, basically. He gave him charge of everything going on down there. It's a pretty incredible thing. You know the story. Things go on, and the butler and the baker get released. <clears throat> I think the baker gets his head cut off. The butler gets free, and says, now Joe says, remember, oh, man, I got you, man. I've got your back, Joe. I'll remember you. He gets out, and what's he do? 
forgets all about him. And two more years go by. Wow. You think your life didn't go the way you think it should? You think you had reversals? What about Joseph? But because he stayed with it, because he continued to do what he knows was right in the sight of God, because he just kept on going, in spite of his reversals, he persevered. The day came when Pharaoh had a dream and nobody could tell it. And the butler remembered. There's a guy in prison who could tell dreams. Joseph! Sorry to wake you up, some of you. <laughs> Joseph, come here! Boy, he got cleaned up, went before the king, told him about the seven years of plenty, then the seven years of famine. He said, there's nobody that smart around here. <laughs> You're my man. Brought him out of there and put him second in command of Pharaoh in all the land of Egypt. It wasn't long till the famine reached where his brothers were and down they came to Egypt and guess what? They all bowed down. Joseph. It's exactly what he saw. He'd have never got there if he hadn't have persevered. I'll guarantee you that wasn't the path he saw in his mind when he saw everybody bowing down to him. That wasn't the route that he, took, that he thought he would take. But you have to keep plugging away. A business study was done and they found that 80% of the sales are made after the fifth call. 80% of sales are made after the fifth call. The problem is 48% of the salesmen quit after one call. 25% quit after the second call. 12% quit after the third call. And 5% quit after the fourth call. That means 80% of the sales go to 10% of the salesmen. Because they keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. The difference between success and failure are those who keep on going. You think Paul was glad he kept on going? You think Joseph was ever glad he kept on going? You think Noah was ever glad he kept on going? What I would say to you tonight is if you're a single parent, keep on going. Keep on pounding the line. Get up and, and get the ball and go right back at it again. I'm saying dad and mom, keep on going. I'm telling you, uh, you got bills to pay, okay, keep on going. You got, you got heartache you're dealing with, okay, keep on going. You say, I'm discouraged, okay, keep on going. Well, I'm, 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 I'm hurting tonight, Pastor. Well then, keep on going. Keep on going though you're hurting. Keep on going though you're discouraged. Keep on the going though you're frustrated. Just keep on going. I don't know how or where I... I learned it in my life, but I learned to keep on going. Maybe, maybe it's because I had an older brother. I don't know. When you have an older brother, you learn to get beat up and keep on going. Anybody testify to that in here? Yeah. And you just, you get knocked down, you get back up. You get knocked down, you get back up. Whether it's football or basketball or whatever sport it was, you just keep on going. When it's summer and it's hot, you keep on going. When it's winter and it's cold and snowy, you keep on going. When you have the unpredictability of spring, you keep on going. When it's fall and it's cool or it's rainy, you keep on going. You're a missionary and your, your field changes or your work changes, you know what you do? You keep on going. You just keep on going. Change ministries, you keep on going. You see, you're, you, you persevere. You just keep, as Woody Hayes said, you pound the line and you pound the line and you pound the line and you just keep on going. The ones who succeed, listen, don't, don't, look, don't look at someone in the church and, and, and some of the, 
the, the couples you look at and you think, man, I tell you what, we'll never be like them. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. You don't know what they were like 30 years ago. You don't know what they looked like 25 years ago. Don't, don't, try, to, don't try to be you know, like the, the Lindermans now. Be like the Lindermans 25 years ago. Okay? You, and you say, how'd they get there? You know how they got there? They just kept on going. They've been, you, you, you ought to hear their story sometime. They've been in churches. They were telling me one time, I think they were in a church where that uh, didn't you have a building program and somebody ran off with the money? Was it the pastor? Wow. How about that? Building program and pastor ran off with money. Wow, that, they were done with church. They, Man, that's the way it is. I'm through with Christianity. Huh? No, they said, pastor ran off the money. You know what? We're serving God. They stayed with it. Perseverance. Don't, don't look at people and think, oh man, they've never been through what I've been through. No, they've probably been through a lot worse. But how'd they get where they are now? They kept on going. God didn't call us to start. He called us to finish. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. And I've kept the faith. Finish. One of the most amazing events at the Olympics is the thing they call the marathon, the Summer Olympics. It's 26 miles, 385 yards. It's really a severe test of human endurance. If you ever watched it, usually they'll, they'll show them starting off early in the morning, and then they'll actually go away and show other things and come back and check in on the runners, you know, because 26 miles and 385 yards takes a while to navigate. In 1968, the games were held in Mexico City. And John Stephen Aquari started the race with other runners. He struggled early cramping up. The high altitude was giving him problems. But not quite halfway through the race, he collided with another runner and fell. He cut his leg and he dislocated his knee. The race continued, of course, and they, they always run the course, and the finish is a final lap around the track to the finish line inside the Olympic Stadium. In Mexico City, it seated 100,000 people. And it's full for the finish of the marathon. And as the runners came in, the stadium's packed, they're cheering the runners, and they cross the finish line, and the race is over. In fact, other events, track and field events, are taking place in the stadium. It was well and after an hour later that a lone runner made his way into the stadium. John Stephen Aquari. His pace was slow, his steps were wobbly, his knee was bandaged but bloody. He looked terrible. But he entered the stadium and began to slowly complete the last lap around the track. Finally, the few remaining spectators realized who it was and what was happening. As the quarry slowly and painfully crossed the finish line, they all cheered, saluting his determination. And, and a reporter came up to him and asked him, what kept you going? It's an hour after everybody's finished. What kept you going? Why didn't you just quit? John Stephen Aquari looked at him and then said, My country did not send me here to Mexico City to start the race. They sent me here to finish the race. We're not just called to start the race. It always, it always bugs me when people say, all that matters is you know Jesus as your Savior. Well, that matters, but that's not all that matters. What matters is are you living your life for His glory and His honor? 
And will you finish that way? I'm going to ask you a question tonight. How many of you have been saved long enough? You've, you've known people, and you know people tonight that started the race, and they're not even in the race tonight. They've quit completely living for God. Anybody know somebody like that? Look at that. Wow. Wow. More than likely, they didn't want to persevere. They hit reversals and they threw in the towel. And they quit. Keep on serving. Keep on running. Never give up. Winston Churchill was called upon to give the commencement address at a college over in England. And Churchill got up and looked at the crowd And he said this, never, never, never give up. And he sat down. Shortest commencement speech, speech probably ever. But they're still talking about it today. Christian, never give up. Never give up. Persevere. Expect those reversals to come. And keep right on going. Three yards and a cloud of dust until the opponent gives up. Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth this evening. Lord, give us this tenacity. Give us this perseverance. Give us the determination that we need to have to keep on going for you. We want to keep on witnessing. We want to keep on having missions conferences. We want to keep on witnessing for Christ. We want to keep on reaching the addicted. We want to keep on having prayer. Seeing prayers answered. Lord, we just want to finish well. For us to finish, help us to persevere. Help us to understand that things won't go like we think they will. But don't let us quit. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer and we'll have our invitation in just a moment. But I wonder how many Christians tonight say, Preacher, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat this evening. Life's been a little tough. I've, I've been struggling a little bit. And the Spirit of God just nudged me tonight and said, that was for you. Don't you quit. You just keep on going. Three yards, a cloud of dust, get up, go back to the huddle, get the ball and hit the line again. Just move the ball down the field. That's all you got to do. In due season ye shall reap if you faint not. Persevere and expect reversals. They'll come. But you keep on going. How many folks tonight would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight. I needed that message. Pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may put them down. In a moment I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has spoken to your heart. Now respond to Him. Bow the knee and say, God, rest if I must, but I will not quit. I will persevere. I will continue. No matter what. I am going to finish the race that you've given to me to run. Let's finish well. Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. Give us a church that perseveres. Let us be people that will finish well. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now Lord, help each one to do what you're bidding them to do in their heart. 
and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist plays. As she plays, Bob will sing. <clears throat> God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. That's right. Oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit, truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all, I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Father, we thank you now for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts tonight and for meeting with us. Lord, thank you for the encouragement we have to persevere, to stay with it, to never give up, to keep on fighting. If we resist the devil, he'll flee from us. If we draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us. And Lord, help us to, to know that we have troubles on every side and we have to keep on going that in due season we shall reap if we faint not and so Lord help us to finish the course with joy and to be keep the faith to be what you desire us to be Lord help us to have a good week this week thank you for a good start today the first day of the week now Lord make us mindful as we leave this place that you go with us I pray others will see Christ in our life this week. Help us to tell others of Christ. And Lord, I pray that we'll see souls saved throughout the week this week. And we can bring some back with us on Sunday to make their profession of faith in Christ. Use us. Use us this week, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Stop by the table back there for the missionary cards, all right? Let's sing together. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you.